What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. So today we're going to be looking at a few things, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up, in my opinion, what I felt was a very critical concern surrounding all of Gotham Knights so far. And that is, are we going to be getting another Red Hood gameplay? Because many of you know, it's been a while since we saw Red Hood, and the representation that we got of him was not necessarily the most stellar. Now, keep in mind, we would probably have to get his character trailer first. I think that's probably how the devs are going to do it, and then they're going to probably show us a small splice of his combat. But many people in the community are curious as to how that's going to look. We've seen a small splice of Robin's gameplay. We've seen a small slice of Batgirl's gameplay. I know this is the one that I keep citing that is causing a little bit of commotion in the community. And many people don't necessarily think that this is going to be showing up in the game. I think it will. It will have tweaks. It will have some modifications. But I strongly believe that this is part of the game. And I'll explain that here in a little bit so that you guys can kind of see where I'm coming from with my assertions. Because, again, 10-minute videos can't really describe a lot of the things that I'm probably trying to convey. So multiple videos is where I usually try to place a lot of those things. But this Red Hood question is really ringing on the minds of a lot of folks. Some people would love to see him in combat that is fluid, that is accurate in a sense, and that shows a little bit more experience with the game. Because from what many people said, they just kind of concluded that it seemed like whoever was controlling Red Hood did not necessarily have some kind of a game plan as to how to make the character feel really good. Now, another thing that I think, though, that may not necessarily be fair is this trailer was designed to push that co-op aspect of the game and it didn't necessarily pan out very well for our boy that's why he looked kind of weak in this you know combat scenario in one sense and then you know you can kind of also add that aspect of whoever was playing him not necessarily being the greatest because you know he had like six thugs here to you know deal with and this would have been a perfect opportunity for us to kind of see him you know change some attacks i'm not saying combos but at least get the you know character in fluid positions position well and you know maybe change some projectile shots with some melee action in a very interesting way but it seemed like they were so interested in trying to grab the characters now you guys know these grab and hold attacks uh maybe there is an animation delay so far because this is a work of progress maybe that animation is supposed to play faster you grab them plant that little bomb on them or whatever or explosive device and then you take them out so i guess that might have been the issue and I think many people in the community want it cleared up at least or at least, you know, managed in a better way to show a better presentation out there. Now, here are my claims. I think what we've gotten in these gameplay trailers are going to be very, very close to what we get in the complete game. These missions and these slices of the game that they've shown are going to show up in the final game. Now, there will be tweaks, obviously. They might see something down the road that they don't feel is appropriate to be in, you know, maybe the environment, the world, or maybe an aspect of things that they will tweak. But I can say that, you know, from seeing this happen in other games, we're more than likely in a position where Gotham Knights is just in its, I'm, I mean, I'm talking about its most final phases for it to come out and not much is really going to change. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cite something that I pretty much responded to one of our audience members because these conversations have been going on. And I just want to say I appreciate everyone who's been commenting, by the way. You guys really do a good job in asking some thought provoking questions. So always ask those questions. I'm happy to answer. If I don't know, I'll just say I don't know. But if I feel, you know, I can probably, you know, take a hypothesis or take a stab at an answer, I'll go ahead and try my best to do it. So one of our audience members, you know, has been asking a lot about the way the gameplays looked from 2020 all the way through 2022. And you know me, I've made my claim and I've actually sat on this and I've said it appears to me that this Batgirl gameplay that we got in 2020, we're going to see a version of it in the game. It's probably going to be cleaned up. We're probably going to get some better graphics or whatever it is, uh, maybe better lighting. But this seems to be a real part of the game. Now, the question is, is it possible that two years ago, Gotham Knights was already in a better and more complete state than, you know, we thought it was? And the answer is actually, in my opinion, I felt like the game was probably almost completed when they first showed us this particular footage at the DC Fandom event. And possibly what went wrong was the game was not playing 
on the older generation of consoles, and I'm picking on the PlayStation 4 for this. Now, I've mentioned this and I've highlighted this in other videos, but many people might say, man, how is it possible that they showed us gameplay two years ago and much is not going to change by the release of the game in 2022? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to a very, very good acquaintance of ours called Cyberpunk 2077. Now, many of you have seen Cyberpunk 2077, its gameplay reveal and all of the above. Those of you who were paying attention, you remember that the very first official gameplay reveal was actually provided to everyone in August of 2018. The date specifically was August 27, 2018. The developers brought an entire 48 minutes of gameplay to the entire community. And they put the work in progress does not represent the final look of the game moniker on there they basically said hey man if you're going to be in this position to come out here and you know look at this please keep in mind that this is probably not what you're going to see so many people were like all right we're going to temper our expectations but it was an extensive look at the game now what's crazy is when the game released not a lot changed from what we saw in that 48 minute gameplay footage to the real game on PC. And I say PC specifically because I played Cyberpunk 2077 at launch. And I can tell you that there seem to be <laughs> almost no issues in terms of, you know, performance and graphics and so on and so forth. In fact, if you want to see a, you know, a comparison, there is a YouTuber named Nick 930 who actually does comparison videos from E3 trailers to the retail or from gameplay reveals to the final game. And he does an entire 26 minute segment pointing out some of the differences from that original gameplay trailer and reveal to the final game. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that not much changed. In fact, I was so surprised as to how little things had changed by the time the game was released in December of 2020. And so when you go back and kind of assess all of that, you will see that there is what I call that room for optimization that needs to happen for a lot of video games. And this is something that in our world as gamers, we don't necessarily take into account. You see, many video games just recently have been getting pushed back. At first, we cited the pandemic. In fact, the, uh, you know, the Gollum game from the Lord of the Rings um, you know, universe just got pushed back. A lot of games are still getting pushed back, even though many studios are operating at full capacity and all of the above. Why are these games getting delayed? Ubisoft Massive's Avatar also got a delay to 2023. If you ask these questions and say, okay, could it be a matter of them being short-staffed? Well, that's unlikely. Could it be a matter of maybe say nobody has enough consoles to play it? At this point, that's not necessarily likely. But remember in 2021, it was probably one of the reasons that Gotham Knights got delayed. Now, keep in mind, I'm picking on the PS4, yes, but there were not necessarily enough PS5s and series consoles in homes for them to be able to get the game out and still expect good sales. Now, the PlayStation 4 console has clocked about 20 million units, and the Xbox console has also clocked a good number of units as well. So it seems to be an appropriate time to bring it out and have that risk as a thing where they say, you know what, even though we're going to take a loss from the old consoles, we still have to go ahead and get our game out. So when you put all of this in perspective, you go ahead and you can see that the thing about optimization is it's actually a big deal in video games. A video game can be fully built, but if it's not optimized to run in its best possible quality, the game is as good as useless because gamers are not going to be able to play the game. So in game development world, there are what they call technical artists and technical programmers whose only job is to make the game function because artists and developers in many cases, all their jobs are to just make the game become a thing. So the artist is always like, yeah, we want these wonderful things on there. The programmers are like, OK, we're going to make it happen for you. But the technical designers are like, your game's not going to run if we actually do this. That's kind of how it goes in game development world. And this is from statements and from, you know, all kinds of media that I've read from game developers across the board. These communications happen. So I think there's time that's needed for this to actually go on in terms of getting the game to be fluid as possible. Now, when it comes to Nightwing and when it comes to Robin, for those who are requesting another gameplay, my guess is maybe they might do one more gameplay just before the game releases and clean up all of the, 
maybe mishaps that happened in that gameplay trailer that was actually showcased. I think it was May or June, uh, you know, with Nightwing and Red Hood just to be able to get the fans in a place where they're much more excited about the game. But I think for the most part, the game is already 90 something percent completed in terms of its systems, in terms of its, uh, you know, core mechanics and all of the above. Now, there might possibly be a few tweaks with combat, but I don't necessarily see that happening because from a lot of the gameplay that they've been showing us, it seems like some systems are already, you know, somewhat set in stone or let me just say somewhat set in place and then maybe stone will be when the game releases perhaps we're going to see color changes we're going to see visual effects changes like i showed you guys in the batgirl trailer from 2020 to the one that they did in 2022 where they just changed the color of a visual effect for one of her special takedowns from purple to yellow so we're going to see some of these tweaks here and there there are things that are going to happen i mean it could be that a design you know decision gets made and they move some things here and there but by and large, this is what I think Red Hood is going to play like. Now, I think that he could play better depending on the player themselves. But for the most part, this is the game that we're going to be getting October of 2022. The question now is, what is your decision based on what you're seeing? Now, yes, the quality could be better. Just like I said in Cyberpunk 2077, when they released the final game, the quality was actually improved. Don't get me wrong. In fact, that 48 minute gameplay was actually kind of in a sense weird. It was cinematic, but it didn't have the same quality as the game on a PC when you were playing it. So Gotham Knights might have an increased quality when the game comes out in terms of visuals and a few things. But for the most part, this should be what many gamers should be able to base their decisions on at this point in time. Any further expectations might lead to a lot of disappointment. So I really wanted to go ahead and make this clear. And if the game comes out and a lot of stuff changes, I will be happy to say, man, I was wrong about that. And I'm happy about all these changes. But it's kind of unlikely that these changes are going to be happening. These major changes are going to be happening three months before the game is released. So thanks so much for watching the video. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. And if you still think they're going to get another, you know, Red Hood trailer, I would love to hear that, too. I think they will uh, just to get the hype and to get the excitement up there. But for now, we're just going to have to wait and see how they pull that off. So thanks so much again. I appreciate you guys so much and we'll talk soon. Peace out.